Welcome to day three of our July educational series. And this month, we're talking about investment. Now, this third day is the 9th of July, 2021. That might not have a meaning to you, but it has a very, very huge meaning to me because my very first partner in the training business, in the business of training, Today happens to be his birthday. And aside from him, I have someone else I work with whose birthday is today that I need to absolutely acknowledge. So you would give me like a few seconds to do a birthday shout out to Adein Kababalola and Gabriel Eddie Osubo, both of who were born on the 9th of July. And today's their birthday. As you can see, I'm getting set for the hangouts later on in the day. I look forward to it. I would give you gist of how things went down later on in the day. I mean, after all, it's a Friday and um, we need to catch our trips. Please, please, please send birthday wishes. If you know them, please send gifts as well because they have been invaluable. Well, particularly, I didn't come about a lot, has been invaluable in my career and walk as a trainer, a speaker and a coach. He says I'm his coach, but I know he's my coach. I could be his mentor, but he's definitely my coach when it comes to things like this. So, Yinka, thank you so much for being there over the years. I value you. I appreciate you. And my audience appreciates you as well because they know how you have been instrumental in making this whole thing come to life. So, going on with investments, I want to continue from where I left off yesterday and that was talking about age sensitivity to investments now when we're talking about low risk investments investments that would most likely almost always give you the kind of returns you want these are the investments that yield between 13 to 15 percent per annum they're relatively stable your money is not likely to get missing i said per Anon, please note that I've seen all sorts of investment vehicles in the last few years. I've seen all sorts of Ponzi schemes in the last few years, and they don't say per annum, they say per month. Please note that low risk investments where you are not likely to run into trouble are the ones between the 15, the 13 to 15 percent band. Now, medium risk investments are those that range between 20 to 35 percent per annum band while the high risk guys are the guys that tell you you'll get a hundred percent within the space of one year and we have come across so many that will give you more than a hundred percent within the space of one year so what your risk appetite is should be tied to one your personality you might be the kind of person who mm, likes the winner takes it all thing who wants to risk everything so you can win everything your personality matters a lot if you are averse to risk please just stay with what you are comfortable with you know i have a number of friends that when they are watching football <laughs> they have palpitations they sit at the edge of the chair those kind of people should just make sure they stay within their safe zone those of you that can't handle the pressure that's why many people i know also don't watch football because they cannot come and go and be dying in their house <laughs> where some people are playing in the uk now those who are risk averse can stay in the safe zone those who love risks can venture out into the risky waters because hey who knows you might just cash out big now more than your personality your age also determines how much risk you can take if you are just starting out and a lot of people are not depending on you you can afford to take a few risks you know you can afford to start all over i mean if you lose everything you made between the year when you were 24 and when you were 25 you can start all over at 26 and you won't lose so much but if you now go and play uh, don't let me say it the way they say it in my dialect that's um you go and gamble with all your pulled together all your life when you're already hitting your retirement age of like 60, 65, it can have extremely dire consequences, not just on you, but on your dependents. So 
how to know how your age relates to your level of risk is the percentage of your funds that should be in risky investments in or rather yeah in risky investments should be 100 minus your age so in essence whatever your age is is what should be safe so in your 20s you would have about 20 percent low risk and then 80 percent you can play with in your 60s you would have 60 percent low risk and well, you can play with 40% venture out. I mean, what's life if you don't live a little? That's how you spread your age with your investment risks. Of course, do not forget that your personality plays a very important role. And you don't really want to be having high blood pressure in old age. So if you can't handle the high risk stuff, please just leave it or commit it to people who would give you some level of guarantees in relation to the safety of your funds. Now, um, quite uh, immediately, 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 let's delve into types of investment vehicles. The very first one, well, for today, because I've said a lot about low risk, I want to talk about low risk investments. And for today, I'll probably just mention low risk investment vehicles. And that is the money market investment vehicles and the fixed income investment vehicles. If we're talking about the money market investment vehicles, we're talking about regular things like fixed deposits. Now, um, the higher the money you have pulled, the higher the rates your bank can offer you on fixed deposits. If your funds are small, the digits will be small. If you have a lot of money pulled together, then you can even begin to negotiate the interest rates the bank would offer you. Now, I know that inflation has really, really turned this into something that has become totally unattractive to people, but do not forget that it's all about how much risk you are trying, or rather you are willing to take in relation to your funds. If you are risk averse, no matter how little that interest is, it might just be safer because it's not likely that the person with your funds would default. Fixed income investments are usually treasury bills and government bonds. These have next to zero default rate. Now, a few years back, some three, four years back, we had them really high up in the two digit range, making it still low risk, but the upper end of low risk. I know that treasury bills in I think 2016, 2017, was paying as high as 18% per annum. And people were comfortably growing their pool of funds. But we know that it's crashed so bad. We're looking at single digits, but always know that these kind of investments always, always pay you back. You will always get your funds. Now there are different types of treasury bills. Some mature in 91 days, some mature in 182 days, some mature in 364 days. You pick what you want. Sometimes you are able to get your interest up front. You need to scrutinize investments based on your risk appetite and the diversification of your portfolio. Di portfolio diversification is extremely important because I know that I'd already mentioned that if you're at a certain age, you should have some high risk and some low risk. That is what I mean by portfolio diversification. When you're investing, please, please, I beg you, do not put all your funds in one investment. Please diversify. Make sure that you are able to, if something goes wrong with one, you still have something to fall back on or you still have one other one you can look to never ever put all your eggs in one basket because if that basket goes wrong eh, i don't want to be the word pacifying you so um we'll continue from here tomorrow and we'll begin to talk about the medium risk investments do make it a date thank you